Daniel Fuller, welcome to Breathe Studio. Hey, Justin. Love the studio. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> We've been working hard on it. Uh, I just as a quick reminder, the, the goal of this podcast is to build community through shared experiences. And today, uh, this is the story of your journey. Um, so thanks for, uh, thanks for coming. Thanks for sharing and thanks for having the strength and being willing to, to do this. Yeah. It's an honor. So cool. thank you. Yeah. Um, few reasons that, that you're here, a few topics on your mind that, that we've talked about you and I, um, uh, that, that we'll get into. Um, but, uh, thinking about Suzanne a little bit, uh, mm -hmm. uh, your, your coworker from full stack, mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit about the the the, the experience uh, that that full stack and you went through with uh, the loss of Suzanne? Yeah, for sure. So to give a little background, uh, full stack, we were a startup in mm -hmm. 2017, and Suzanne and I were actually the first two employees hired outside of our co-founders, and um, and so we were there from the beginning. So we mm -hmm. kind of went you know, we're in the trenches together. Mm -hmm. um, she was actually a really good friend with my now business partner, Don, who's our mm -hmm. CEO. And um, they had worked together in the past and, you know, struck up a friendship through that. Mm -hmm. And she was one of those trustworthy people that you mm -hmm. want, you know, on your team as a startup, mm -hmm. both because of her integrity, but also just how like knowledgeable she was in our particular mm -hmm. business. And, um, and so this would have been in 2021 so two years ago or like actually right around this time mm -hmm. where like we i get this call out of the blue like hey something's happened with suzanne she's in the hospital mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's serious and so for us this is right before our busy season she was a mm -hmm. key linchpin person for that mm -hmm. and um she fought for her life for a, a f several weeks and then ended up ended up passing. Mm. I think she was 41, if I remember wow. right. So had a, a young daughter, high school age, um, was a key person for our company mm -hmm. and, you know, just, just gone. And it, um, so that was such a, a shocking experience. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you know, as you know, from working in startup and scale mm -hmm. up environments, like the business has to go on. And mm -hmm. so we, we were living with, with this grief mm -hmm. of her, her loss, but also mm -hmm. like we had to fill her role during a very crucial time. Sure. And so I just remember it being like this constant presence of, mm -hmm. of grief and shock mm -hmm. while like having just to, you know, muster the energy to, to keep going, to mm -hmm. keep our business alive. You know, we had just onboarded the largest client in our, mm -hmm. our company history mm -hmm. And, um, and so, um, that was, that was a really difficult experience, but at the same time, um, I saw the resilience and beauty of, of our team, like mm -hmm. ra rally together and, mm -hmm. and support each other yeah. around that. And so I, yeah. I could share more about that, but it was, I think there's something profound in the loss of like a coworker, mm -hmm. especially when you're such a tight knit group, yeah. you know, if you're in a. 500 employee company you probably will hear about it but sure. you may not know that person directly but yeah. at the time i think we were five or six employees sure so whole, was, whole company is yeah. deeply impacted right yeah and, so. and and has to figure out right there are so many paths to go yeah with covering work to continuing the business making sure that the business goes but yet you all have a massive weight on your shoulders at the same time yeah. trying to navigate that. Um, that sounds, that sounds incredibly tough. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it was, was there anything that, that stood out about the, that moment, those moments, maybe the first few months you said you were going into your busy season. Um, like how did, how did you, how did you find balance with, with each other? Um, as, as you went to keep the business, afloat yeah. uh but also knowing that all of you are in in pain yeah so i'll just go to my relationship with with don lively our again our ceo mm -hmm. business partner in particular um what we did was we just created space for every meeting we had together you know mm -hmm. which usually was like a weekly one-on-one -on -one, and then mm -hmm. we had our weekly it's called an l10 meeting for those who are eos people mm -hmm. 
and we just created space at the beginning to mm-hmm. share, mm-hmm. you know, feelings, what was going on, how mm-hmm. we were doing, uh, and just different memories mm-hmm. of Suzanne, what we missed about her mm-hmm. the most. And so it, we couldn't reside there you know, for a long time, mm-hmm. unless there was a day where someone just really needed to reside there and sure. to, to be in that. But sure. we at least created some space to acknowledge like, this has happened. This is a huge loss. Right. This is what we're experiencing. This is what specifically we're bringing today. Right. And, and just to, to acknowledge that that's there right. and it's, you know, it's not going to go away for a while. Right. And to see each other in our, our mm-hmm. humanity and then, also transition together to okay we have a business to run and we have gaps to fill now Mm -hmm. in suzanne's absence and Mm -hmm. so how are we going to fill those Mm -hmm. and so i think just that acknowledgement of Mm -hmm. humanity feelings Mm -hmm. um, and that shared experience together was significant yeah um i can't say whether or not i feel like that is common or uncommon but like off the top of my head i feel like it could have been really easy to go down the path of like, let, let's make sure the business survives. It also could have been really easy to go down the path of, you know what, shut her down. Uh, we're, we're in deep, uh, we're in, we're in deep pain, but it sounds like you struck a balance by creating space, acknowledging your feelings, uh, being empathetic towards one another, um, in, in almost a very compassionate way to, make sure that you're not just addressing how you all felt, but you're also addressing Suzanne and the impact that she had in your life. Um, and you got to continue working through the business and working on the business. Mm -hmm. So it feels like just based on hearing that you found a really, really strong balance. Did it feel that way at the time? Yeah, I, I guess we didn't, I, I don't know that I remember being super intentional Mm -hmm. about it. I think I would be more so now Mm. based on that experience. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think that was something that Don and I really naturally do and how we lead Mm -hmm. is, oh, and probably sometimes to a fault where Mm -hmm. we're like, we're going to acknowledge our humanity and what's going on Mm. in our lives and and just get that out Mm -hmm. so that other people are aware of that and have Mm -hmm. empathy Mm-hmm. And we show empathy around that. Mm-hmm. And so like, I think we were just naturally like we're naturally wired that way. Mm-hmm. And so it just, it just happened. And mm-hmm. then when you're in the fourth quarter of our business too, like mm-hmm. you don't have time to reside mm-hmm. too much there. Like you just, you have mm-hmm. to go. Yeah. And so that, that was also a natural to like prompt to like pull us out of the, okay, just residing in right. our feelings and, right. you know, and so, um, yeah, but I, I now I think would would have more in, intentionality around mm-hmm. that if if and be able to say like this needs to happen, mm-hmm. you know, for mm-hmm. people that are going through similar to what sure. we went through. So sure, yeah. what uh, can you talk a little bit about that intentionality? Like, what what would you do? Um, even though you found, I mean, the reaction seems to be phenomenal, uh, the the way you handled it uh, across your team, um, but you also learned things. Uh, and things that might have been even more impactful to you. What, what are some of those things that, that maybe you change, um, you know, you know, hindsight 2020? Yeah. So what I would do is get, have at least one more open ended opportunity for people in that environment to, mm-hmm. to share their pain, share memories mm-hmm. and to, just to get together without an agenda besides like, mm-hmm. let's, let's remember Suzanne, let's share about her. So Mm -hmm. we see, we see families do this like around the loss of a loved one where, Mm -hmm. you know, it's like families just getting together and naturally, you know, they're, they're crying, they're sharing heartache, Mm -hmm. they're sharing stories, happy Mm -hmm. memories about that person. Mm -hmm. Um, Sometimes, you know, there's an expression of anger, you know, like just different process or different stages of grief, like manifesting. Mm -hmm. And, and so I think I would have just carved out some more time Mm. to do that collectively. Um, Cause we had little pockets of that, like I mentioned at the beginning of a meeting, but like, and then we all attended 
a funeral together. Sure. But it was, you know, in the midst of a bunch of other things. So I think I would have right. created, you know, more space specifically for that mm -hmm. as like a, a mile marker in, in the grief journey mm -hmm. to say like we did this collectively. Mm -hmm. And then I would also just be more intentional about like everyone needs space mm -hmm. and, you know, and space and grace is what I like to say is like mm, to, that. to process individually mm -hmm. and to just take time away from the business. And so ensuring that people felt the permission, like you can go and, you know, take a couple hours or take a day, like mm -hmm. whatever that is to just process. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I remember that happened with me where I just hit a point. It was like, it usually for me, it happens like after something like this, like you go for a couple hours during the day and like right after lunch, just like I, I'm done. Like sure, I need sure. some space. I remember having some space. I went to Eagle Creek park here in Indianapolis and just went for a hike and yeah. was able to like process, listen to music, cry sure. for me. Like that physicality is, is really important. Mm -hmm. So give yeah. people more space to individually process and grieve. Sure. Too, so sure. Yeah. That's uh that's super helpful. I, I think, uh, I think a lot of companies and a lot of, a lot of workplaces, a lot of teams, uh, could, could heed that advice. Um, so thanks for sharing that. I, I do want to come back to something that, that you said about you and Don. You said, um, that you and Don just kind of naturally fell into, uh, a, a very human centric approach to this. Um, I like to think that those things are relatively, uh, natural in, in many people, but I also think there's a lot of it that has been learned, uh, mm -hmm. over time. Maybe you've seen it done really well. Maybe you've seen it done really poorly and you say, Hey, I don't ever want to put somebody in that position again. Where do you think like you and Don kind of brought that, um, brought that approach? Where do you think that came from? Yeah. So I would say, um, Don and I, without telling, you know, individual stories, I, mm -hmm. you know, I think we've both experienced, um, different challenges. I mean, Suzanne's death was one of those really like mm -hmm. significant challenges, but, and we, we've processed those in, in the company of, of safe people mm -hmm. and we've received like really great, you know, companionship, friendship, mm -hmm. you know, mentorship from people that helped us to like walk through mm -hmm. those experiences. And so a lot of it is just us living out, you know, what we had received from mm -hmm. other people. Wow. And, and so, but it's, I, I think a lot of the challenges we see in, in companies where people don't do that is, and when they don't really receive people well from mm -hmm. a, and a bereavement perspective mm -hmm. is because it's, they have a lot of unprocessed grief. Mm -hmm. And so they're, they're holding that because they've never been led through sure. that process or taken the time and space that they needed to pr like process the grief themselves. Sure. And so I honestly, I think it just has to do with us giving ourselves the space and grace and receiving that from other people, right. Right. you know, over and over again. Um, like every human, you know, has at least like probably five to seven really difficult experiences that they've mm -hmm. gone through of, of loss of grief, mm -hmm. maybe not necessarily a death of a loved one, but a, mm -hmm. another type of trauma. Sure. And so I think, yeah, having processed those, it gives you the space and grace to offer that, you know, mm -hmm. to each other and to yeah. others. So, yeah. 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 That's amazing. I, um, I'm, I'm curious, um, uh, you recently, fairly recently, very recently lost your father, Tim. Yeah. Um, and, uh, that experience of being in the workplace, um, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to, to know, uh, and I, I'll kind of just jump right there, but, uh, curious to know how that impacted, um, the way you were able to, uh, grieve initially, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I don't really want to talk so much about work right now, but like, yeah. uh, but knowing that that human centric approach, knowing that how important compassion is, the, the lesson you learned for space and grace, mm -hmm. um, how did that, how has that played in with, uh, the, the loss of your father, Tim? Yeah. Thanks for asking. And yeah, this, the loss still feels very poignant. It's mm -hmm. very recent, you know, within the last few months mm -hmm. and it was unexpected. So, mm -hmm. 
my dad was 66. Um, he had a consulting business that was very profitable. Mm -hmm. And he was kind of in, even though he was 66, which is retirement age for some people, mm -hmm. he was sort of in the peak of his, like, mm -hmm. I, I'd say like his legacy work. Mm -hmm. And he literally was, was going, going, going. And then mm -hmm just like gone mm. the next morning. And so it's it just a very shocking loss. Sure. And he was, he was a fixture, positive fixture in, in my life, mm -hmm. um, lived five minutes down the road from mm -hmm. me. Uh, we have three kids. He, so he had three grandkids. He was a regular part of their lives. And so sure. um, just a, a, like I would describe it as like a crushing blow um, totally. because of, how regular he, he was in our lives. And, and so I experienced personally how difficult it is, despite how motivated and energized I am to mm -hmm. be, to be success for full stack, to be successful as a partner mm -hmm. and for me to be successful in my role, mm -hmm. um, at full stack, like it, it just very made it very difficult mm -hmm. to show up mm -hmm. and to, to be motivated and not mm. it has no statement on like full stack. It just has a sure. statement on like um, my personal experience and like right. you, you deep down in my soul, I think I was asking, you know, what, what is most important mm -hmm. right now? And it, and I, I felt like the answer was, you know, I, to attend to my mom, who's now a widow, mm -hmm. you know, who mm -hmm. I'm, the, I'm her only local child who's helping her, you know, process through things locally as mm -hmm. well as like with a lot of the practical matters that she had to deal sure. with because I'm here um, and attend to my own process of like grief and shock and mm -hmm. like letting that happen. So it just like everything in me was screaming like this, this is the most important for me to attend to right now. Mm -hmm. Yet I have a team to manage. I have mm -hmm. sales goals to hit, mm -hmm. you know, you go down the line of like, my responsibilities mm -hmm. at, at full stack. And I think it's, this would be true for anyone at any size company, but um, especially true as a key person of a, a very small team. Mm -hmm. I mean, at, at the time we had 14 people. Mm -hmm. And so you remove one of those 14 people from a small business. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's a big loss. And right, so right. it's just practically very difficult to, mm -hmm. for someone like me to, yeah. To be gone and to be focused on like my, my, my grieving process and my family, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. in, in the, in an unexpected loss like mm -hmm. that. So how did, how did you, um, how did you make space? How have you made space? Yeah. So there was just the immediate days, you know, right after that. But then I just, I had to tell my team, like, again, it's like that two o'clock mark hit, mm -hmm. you know, the, several weeks after and you know i pushed pretty hard to get what i could get done and then i would just hit that spot and like i would need some space mm -hmm. and so i there were a couple i take you take the few days you know of bereavement time and then after a few weeks after that it was just like you know knock off at two mm -hmm. or three and just spend some time like you know caring for myself sure. um, so that i could show up for my family later you know in the evening and then i could show up mm -hmm. again to to full stack the next few days and so you know i i have i would also say that i so i learned like here's what is help are helpful activities for me to, yeah. to process so sure. for me again it's like hiking being outdoors like moving my body being physical mm -hmm. um, that just helps me to be in touch with my emotions and right. uh, my spirituality and then being and surrounding myself with, with safe people. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, therapists as well as, um, you know, friends who are mm -hmm. just really good be, and they've showed me this throughout time and we've mutually offered this to each other just to be, to be present to mm -hmm. me, you know, and to, you know, help walk me through like this, this grief journey. Sure. And so sure. surrounding myself with those, those people as yeah. well. So, um, thank you for sharing that. Um, and I feel like I'm gonna say that, you know, a dozen times today, uh, maybe more. Uh, I'm, I'm curious, you, you mentioned safe people and, um, 
you mentioned therapists, which, you know, safety, uh, um, is, is part of the, part of their job. Um, but I'm, I'm really curious on the friends that were able to provide some stability and the things they did that, um, I, I mean, maybe, maybe the things that they did that stood out in, in helping you get through. I, I know I struggle providing great support for, uh, my friends and, and their, and their trouble times. I jump into action, right? Mm-hmm. And a lot of times they don't need action, right? Yeah. Sometimes they do. Yeah. But, but other times they need other things. Um, and so, so I'm curious for you, what did, what were some of the things that your friends did that were just really meaningful and, and really supportive to you in, in those moments? Yeah. So I'll, I'll start. I mean, and I think this goes to the, like the workplace and tell you the type of people and how they showed up. So I, there were four coworkers and they were, I would say representative of like, the overall team Mm -hmm. our team is spread out throughout the state and so the um there's some of my team members weren't physically able to to help in these ways but they you know helped in other ways but i had four team members that showed up one of them organized like a meal for my family and close friends like right after the Mm -hmm. the memorial service others were like helped with all the details around like the viewing Mm. and others like you know went went shopping you know for my family who was gathering and like ran errands yeah a bunch of kids so like they so they did a lot of those practical things Mm -hmm. um which were super are always super helpful when you're trying to attend to Mm -hmm. your grieving process and then your family members in my case there's a ton of kids running around too sure um with my family and my my nieces and nephews and so just to have that space and to give them that space mm-hmm. where we don't have to deal with like all the practical stuff i think mm-hmm. is is really helpful um and then i would say the the other friends you know just i i try to think about like what questions to ask and how to show up for people mm-hmm. and i i focus on a couple things is one is non-anxious presence Mm -hmm. and so the friends that were super helpful for me um, were a non-anxious presence and so how i defined that was they didn't offer like empty platitudes Mm -hmm. so you know like examples of empty platitudes would be like you know everything happens for a reason Mm. or you know they're in a better place but right um that is typically people working out their own anxieties sure um and they just showed up and said like what like what would be helpful for you right now mm-hmm. like would it be to process or you know or to tell stories about your dad or like mm-hmm. like what's what's going on for you today and so they would they would not just ask like how are how are you doing cuz mm-hmm. obviously rough you right, know right. but instead ask more specific questions of like what what I needed in that moment mm-hmm. and then just created space to, for that. And, um, I found that they, yeah, they really wanted to know, I mean, all of them wanted me to share what I needed. <clears throat> and mm-hmm. then just, I ended up sharing a lot of specific things about my dad and mm-hmm. where it allowed them to then ask more questions about, about my dad and mm-hmm. what this loss like means for me and my family. And, mm-hmm. And so a lot of like great questions and listening and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, yeah. that was, was good. Yeah. Uh, the, the calming presence, um, I mean, you're, uh, just having gotten to know you a little bit over the past couple of months, like you, you are a very calming presence. Um, and so, uh, to have somebody show up and, and, and to sit or to grab you and go for a walk or something like that, mm-hmm. um, I imagine was almost, kind of mirroring mirroring you yeah uh to some degree and it 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 feels like i'm sure like you are probably that to them in a lot of instances um because we all have our anxiousness and we all have our we all have our stuff right um do you feel like your uh like kind of the way you show up for them uh, could have been one of the reasons that they showed up for for you as strongly as they did 
Yeah, I mean, I I think so. I'm probably going to be someone that's generally self-effacing and like mm-hmm. don't <clears throat> don't want to take the credit for that. But I I would say in confidence, mm-hmm. yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think about one of my coworkers lost his dad earlier this year, mm-hmm. and it was a little bit more expected, but still it happened pretty quick. Sure. And, and so just, I was able to, you know, show up for him and some of these ways that we're describing. And I think he, he returned that to me. Um, another friend, Dave, um, lost his dad last year Mm -hmm. and a couple of buddies and I showed up for him and I think some meaningful ways. Mm -hmm. And his, his example stood out to, stands out to me the most he showed up at my work like the week after my dad passed away Mm -hmm. and he just gave me a hug and handed me like a candle and a letter Mm. and the letter basically said hey i bought the same candle and on the ninth of every month which is my dad Mm -hmm. died on the ninth of june Mm -hmm. um, i'm gonna light this candle in the morning and just honor your dad pray for your dad Mm -hmm. and your family and i invite you to light the candle with me as well Mm -hmm. and but he also said no pressure if this isn't meaningful to you sure but it was like that was very personal it was very personal just and very simple yet Mm -hmm. like so rich Mm -hmm. and meaningful Mm -hmm. and and so yeah i'm just so thankful for people like him sure Um, sure um we talked a little bit about uh, re-entry um, in, into the workplace, and uh, it is a topic that I think right now is 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 a pretty hot topic, mm-hmm. uh, at least social media wise. And uh, uh, there's some organizations out there doing some really good work, uh, research and studies on um, the the impact of time off and making sure that it doesn't have to be linear and that there's policy changes, uh, to, Mm -hmm. to bereavement leave. Um, but part of, part of the leave process, I mean, is ultimately coming back. Mm -hmm. Um, and for teammates, uh, who some of them may have shared experiences, many may have not, uh, I have heard stories and I'm sure you, you, you have heard stories and maybe even have experiences, but, um, I'm, I'm curious for, for people coming back for teammates that are receiving, uh, a teammate that has been gone. Mm -hmm. Um, what are some of the things that, um, were helpful to you, uh, in, in coming back that, that they were able to, to provide for you and your work? Yeah. Yeah. I know we've talked about, uh, how we give like the most progressive companies will give uh, parents, you know, three to four Mm -hmm. months of paid maternity and or paternity leave, parental leave. Um, And then typically like the most we see from a bereavement perspective would be five days. Mm -hmm. And that's if it's a close, you know, family member. So a child, a spouse, a parent, you know, and, and so I think the reality is, is like, when when i came back or when others who have lost someone comes back like that time is just is insufficient you know Mm -hmm. three to five days off Mm -hmm. it's really insufficient to you know to to go through that entire process Mm -hmm. in similar ways i think three months of parental leave is pretty insufficient especially Mm -hmm. if it's your first time to like Mm -hmm. really get back into the same energy level and output you know sure to work and so i th- i think it's just like i said earlier i boil it down to space and, mm-hmm. and grace mm-hmm. and so the space is realizing like okay this person's normal output would be eight to ten hours a day and you know maybe for a period of time it's going to be five to six mm-hmm. and and so we need to give them that space mm-hmm. and and then the grace is around realizing okay because they're they're not going to have that same capacity and output as before like Mm. what can we what burdens can we practically alleviate so Mm. can Mm. we assign different tasks that they Mm -hmm. typically do to other people sure you know and and so sometimes that means like other people might have to work more or different things that 
they were doing that may not be a top priority, like get pushed to the side because right. they they are trained to do other things. And so there were, you know, practical tasks that I I do for clients, for prospective clients that team members, you know, just took off my mm-hmm. plate mm-hmm. and and just ran they were trained to do so they ran and, and did mm-hmm. that. And mm-hmm. so I think just that's what I mean by by grace mm-hmm. too is just like what are those like practical things we can take mm-hmm. off of people's plates? And then, sure. you know, I think it's as simple as showing up in, in the right presence, like that non-anxious presence and mm-hmm. asking questions and mirroring back to people, things that are, are helpful mm-hmm. and not empty platitudes. And so, um, a shout out to Liesl Murtis from, um, I forget the name of her company, but I know her website's lieselmurtis.com. Um, but <laughs> she just, endorsement is, there. <laughs> yeah, she's really has helped me to think through, okay, like what are those, how do I show up and mm-hmm. what do I say and not say? Sure. And like, that's just so important, especially when we talk about managers and coworkers. It's right. like you can, in some cases, if the way you show up can impact their day or their week and just sink Mm -hmm. like sink them if you know yeah if you you show up with an anxious presence and so right it's really important from on a human level but then also on a productivity level totally you know and how we how we show up when someone's going through something like this totally and it sounds like your your team some of the things that they that they did and and you mentioned it earlier just just you know two o'clock three o'clock hits and you just you, you hit your wall uh and and it sounds like they made space for you for that to be okay because in a lot of places that might be really really tough mm-hmm. for teams to allow that to happen yeah um but it sounds like there was you were able to take that space and probably still i would imagine need space on certain days or every day um uh and 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 you and your leadership and Don's leadership and as the company has grown you seem to have made uh, a almost developed a culture of that being okay, right? A very, mm-hmm. a very caring, compassionate, understanding culture that yes, we have a business to run, but it's run by people for people. And if they aren't, um, if they aren't in a good spot to run the business, then let's allow some grace and let's allow some space. Yeah. Yeah. Our mission is crafting a human experience and mm-hmm. we have to, for our, for our clients and for the cultures that our clients mm-hmm. are creating, you know, mm-hmm. whether it's a nonprofit or a business mm-hmm. and like, how can they hone in on the human experience of, of their team? Mm-hmm. And, and so I'd say we, we do pretty well at that, but it's, it's also to a fault. I mean, there mm-hmm. is, this is a very significant challenge for small businesses in particular, mm-hmm. because I, like I said, someone gets, you know, removed from a situation or has a difficult thing like I experienced, Mm -hmm. like someone has to pick that up for the business to continue for sales goals to be hit for clients to be served, et cetera, for finances to be done, like whatever Mm -hmm. it is. And so it makes it particularly challenging because we're not a thousand member team where it's like you lose salesperson number one, you know, then number two, three, four, you know, pick, pick that up. Sure. Sure. And so, that's what I would say is has to be held in, in a balance that we're, we're trying to figure out right? because like the, the work still has to get done. Right. You know? so. Right. Um, you, you said something when we were talking, uh, before about, um, uh, I, I think we were talking about like uplifting things that, that happen in, in, in rough times. And you, and you said something about, talked a little bit about the way people show up. Uh, and I think you're, um, I think your comment was uh, around, uh, and you might have to remind me, but death death brings out the best in humanity. Yeah, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I'm. That's and that's the thing that's hardest because I like, I do believe that death brings out the best mm-hmm. in in people. Like you see sh- people show up mm-hmm. in the most beautiful ways and s- say and offer say the most profound things and offer like this incredible like presence Mm -hmm. in in times of loss. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like I look at that, I'm like, 
but I want my dad back. You right. know, I'm like really thankful for all the, how people have showed up for me in the last few months. Mm-hmm. But like I would trade that sure. for, Absolutely. you know, for my dad to still be around for us to, you know, have breakfast at Cafe Patishu and share war stories of being, you know, partners in small businesses sure, and sure. to get advice and wisdom from him. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, w- I would trade that. Of course. Yet accepting like he's gone and I've, I've seen people like my friend Dave, like my coworkers, like I mentioned, like Don, you know, I've seen them show up and in ways and, and say, th- and then strangers that, you know, have come out, out of the woodwork that my dad influenced in his life and work and just say the most incredible mm. things like people you don't know. Yeah. People that I don't know. And like, like literally grown men showing up at his, his viewing that I had never met before, like in tears saying that like the profound, beautiful things Mm -hmm. about my dad Mm -hmm. and messages that my family and I got just honoring Mm -hmm. him. And, and so that has, it's, it's sparked in me, like how, how can I, like live a life of like legacy mm. like my dad lives because th- yeah. that's the thing is people typically just focus on the positive mm-hmm. sides of people in times of loss and mm-hmm. my dad was an imperfect man and i could go sure. through the list of like all the ways that he you know he failed that he would he would have admitted to mm-hmm. of like i struggled with this i failed mm-hmm. with this you know and but i think those are important things to remember too of like, how can we learn from people's mistakes that have gone before us? But at the same time, like he lived such a life of purpose and legacy Mm -hmm. and the people and what they've said have reminded me of that. And it sparked Mm -hmm. in me to remember what's most important, Mm -hmm. you know, and how do I, and how I show up Mm -hmm. on a daily basis for my kids, for my coworkers, Mm -hmm. you know, in the community Mm -hmm. and, and so people and what they've said have reminded me of that and have sparked, Mm -hmm. sparked me in that. Yeah. 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 Seeing, uh, seeing your dad's legacy in action, uh, I can imagine is a pretty big motivator. Is that what you want? Is that what, how, how, how you want people to show up for, for your family? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I think my dad was, was mission driven Mm -hmm. in that he believed that his work was, was important for mm-hmm. the sake of, you know, growth of people, the growth of organizations. Um, mm-hmm. I won't go into all the specifics, but like he, he was driven by a mission that mm-hmm. was just bigger than like the profits. Mm-hmm. And so like he had profits, which was great. But, mm-hmm. Like it, like deep down what the fire in his belly, you know, mm-hmm. it was like the mission of the people that he served. And yeah. so I think that's it, just a good reminder of that, mm-hmm. of, and like, I think of why you are starting bereave. It's like, because that time and space after someone has passed is so, it's so important for mm-hmm. immediate family members, for the organizations, companies that they were a part of for the community mm-hmm. as a whole. And this, like, this can't be missed right. and in our culture. And, right. and, and it, it often is because we are quick to just to move on sure. and to forget and it's just a blip on the radar, right. but like it's it's so important for right. for for humanity to to properly grieve and to attend to that that process. Right. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, Tim Tim sounds like an amazing man who left a lot of uh, uh, a lot of people better than he found him. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Daniel, thanks for being here. Anything else that 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 uh, that we should cover before we part ways here? Um, no, I just would say a couple like resources that have been helpful for me. Um, two authors, Kate Bowler, um, uh, and Francis Weller and the names of their books are escaping me right now, but mm-hmm. Kate Weller, um, uh, excuse me, Kate Bowler is basically talks about like how, um, like just gives an alternative way of like the empty platitudes that people give Mm. like during times like this. So she has some great resources around that. And then Francis Weller um, talks about like the five 
gates of grief and like the impact of grief mm. on us. And so I'd say those resources, if anybody wants to dive deeper in this are, have been really mm -hmm. helpful for me and my family out uh, through this time. Yeah. So, yeah. That's amazing. Thanks for sharing that. Thanks for yeah. being here. Uh, thanks for, uh, for, for sharing your experience for others to relate to, uh, because there are plenty of folks, uh, in the world that need to hear some of the things that you're saying or want to hear them. And, um, uh, you've, you've provided some, some great insights today. So thanks for that. Yeah, for sure. My pleasure.